Well, hey guys. Uh, I had a few of my subscribers request a video of my uncle's John Deere 318. And uh, here it is. I'm up at his shop today and uh, <coughs> came in here so uh, you guys could see it. Uh, so here it is. It's not um, definitely not a showroom tractor. As you can see, it has lots of wear and tear to it. But this, um, the 318 is the most sought after garden tractor ever made by John Deere. And this one, although it's beat up, it has a heart of gold. This thing just runs and runs and runs. It's unbelievable. It's a 1986 model. Uh, my uncle bought it as a replacement for his 316. Um, I believe the 316 had the Onan engine, not the Kohler, but uh, someone ran it out of oil and blew the engine up. So he brought it back to the dealer, which is about 10 minutes down the road from here, and uh, traded it in for the 318. But uh, like I said, it's an 86 model. Uh, it's, so it's a little early. They started making these in 83. Um, it's kind of like the 210, but I mean, I was trying to find a 318 like this one because they're so reliable and they're so sought after. Um, so I'll, I'll go through it real quick. I'll just, um, this tractor originally had the Onan B43 engine in it, and uh, at, I want to say maybe 1,500 hours or so, um, my cousin and I, now, this is like 10 years ago. My cousin and I were driving it around, and the engine started smoking real bad, and it was overheating. And uh, next thing you know, it blew up. So uh, my uncle went to a place about an hour away from here and got this new engine. It's a Linamar LX770, which is a direct replacement for the Onan B43. Now, from what I understand, Linamar is a company out of Canada, and Linamar bought out Onan and uh, continued making engines with the Onan name, and then they started calling them Linamars. Um, and they, they used all the same parts as an Onan. So this LX770 is basically the exact same thing. Um, it's a two-cylinder uh, upright gas engine. It's not a V-twin, but it's, it's a gas, and it's a, um, a very good. The Onans are very reliable engines. Um, everything is all in one neat little package here. Uh, you got your fuel filter there, which I don't think is original. My uncle probably put that on there. Get your air cleaner. Uh, it's all I can't really get into it because of the side panels and it's all so tight. But uh, here, here's the hood. It's made out of fiberglass, and you can see it's gone through a lot of damage. The headlights, the lens fell off, and now the, the bolts are are uh, all broken, so the lights don't work. And uh, the grill, as you can see, is also missing. And this, the grill actually fell off after, not too long after my uncle got the tractor. My cousin started it up. <coughs> it was in the barn over there. And uh, my cousin started it up by accident one day, and he put it, uh, and got it going forward, and uh, drove it straight into the dump truck and uh, busted the grill. And to this day, it still has no grill. So that's the story of that. Um, you can see how barely dinged up it is here, but I mean, well, lots of it may be worn down. It's still a very reliable tractor. It works almost flawlessly. Um, so we'll go back to the engine. It's got a car, interstate car battery in it. Um, uh, I'm not sure how many hours it has on it. The hour meter broke, as you can see there. That might be an hour meter down there, but I don't know. Um, I'll, uh, here's a decal. Uh, I'll get up on the tractor and I'll show you the controls. Um, narrow profile, just like the 210. The steering wheel is brand new because the other one cracked and uh, cracked in two. Um, it has hydraulic steering, which is really nice. It's you can't really tell from here, but the hydraulic pump is under the engine at the bottom of the steering shaft, and uh, you've got a hydraulic cylinder there that turns the uh, spindle to turn the wheels. So that's real nice. All you have to do is turn it with one finger. It's real nice. I love that. So there's the uh, steering. Controls are pretty, pretty self-explanatory here. Here's your throttle, slow and fast. Um, now, the 318, the good thing about them is that uh, they had a variety of options available. And as you can see, there's two switches here. This switch is for the, uh, the power takeoff. And um, it's a horizontal shaft engine. So the power takeoff is driven out, out the front. It's, a, uh, it's driven with a mule drive, which is down, 
down at the bottom there, the mule drive twists the deck drive belt and turns the deck. Um, this is a 46 inch deck with the extra gauge wheels on it and I think this is the second one he, he's had on it. The other one is in the barn over there and that, that got all rusted out. Or I think he actually might have salvaged it from the 316 but I'm not sure. So, uh, uh, so it's this, they all came with an electric switch so here on and off. And uh, this has hydraulic deck lift too, which is an option on the 210. I'm going to try to find a kit for the 210. You have your dual hydraulic levers here. This one, you, you pull back to raise and lower the deck. Or no, you pull back to lower it. Now pull back to raise it, sorry, and then push forward to lower it. And then this one controls, uh, this, this lever actually controls the three-point hitch too. Um, and then this lever controls, we control the front um, hydraulic couplers as you can see here. It's got two sets of couplers and all you have to do is, if you have like a front mounted attachment like a blade or something that has a hydraulic cylinder, all you have to do is just hook these up to it, hook, hook the lines into it and uh, you can use that second lever there to adjust it, to angle it. Um, there you got the PTO which drives off the front. Uh, and this switch here is for the optional rear power takeoff which this tractor doesn't have but it just it's an add-on it bolts to the back of the transmission there um, here here's your light switch but uh, the switch broke off and the lights don't work here this is your control for the transmission it's hydrostatic which is real nice just like uh, the LA150 but instead of using forward and reverse pedals this is what's called the hand hydro you have neutral forward and then reverse which is really convenient so you don't have to keep your foot down there to move the pedals. There's a micro switch. The neutral start switch on this machine is down in the neutral position there and it just keeps the, uh, the tractor from starting if it's in gear because you don't want that to happen. Uh, down here your you got your choke for the uh, carburetor. Serial tag which is down there. Here you have your parking brake uh, which is locked by pressing the brakes together. And another cool thing about this tractor is that it uses individual turning brakes like a real tractor, like an agricultural tractor. You have your left brake, so um, if you want to make a sharp left turn, you just hold the left brake down, then you have your right brake. And if you flip this, uh, I can't exactly do it here, but if you, if you flip that and then push the two pedals in, you can lock them together as like a dual brake. So that's that. Uh, it's got these deep foot wells. Um, you can see the labels are worn off. It's kind of hard to get on and off this tractor because uh, the seat, as you can see, is busted, but that's the original seat. Um, you have your two lock nuts, and then there's a knob there, and there should be a knob there, but that, you have to undo that whole assembly. Here you have your fuel gauge, which is actually kind of cool. This needle here uh, moves from full all the way down to empty. The gas tank, as you can see under there, that's four and a half gallons, which is nice and long. I think it's the same size tank used in the 210, but I'm not sure. It, go, it certainly goes a lot longer um, than a typical tank. Now, uh, here uh, you have a tail light, and uh, the other tail light's broke, but uh, it, they're actually real lights instead of deflectors like uh, the 210 uses. Um, now, back here, this has the famous three-point hitch, which was an option on these models. Uh, it's got the, the, uh, the top link, which hooks up to the rock shaft. Every tractor has a rock shaft on the back of it, and the rock shaft is controlled by a hydraulic cylinder, which is back in there, which runs off the pump, obviously. And then uh, you just you hook the chains up and the top link and all that. And then uh, back here, you have your hitch plate, which has three points to it as well. Uh, my uncle has a variety of attachments that he uses for this, uh, a lawn vacuum, um, a single bottom plow, a set of cultivators, uh, that spare mower deck that I was talking about, and he has all different kinds of stuff. All right, we're in the barn here. I'll show you some of the attachments he has. Here's a, uh, a custom lawn vacuum that he made out of a Model 80 uh, utility cart. This was actually sitting behind the barn there for quite a few years until he finally put it back together. Uh, here's a cedar, which hooks up to the three-point hitch. Here's a hydraulic blade with its cylinders to angle it. It hasn't been used in a long time, though. 
these are the hoses that would hook up to the hydraulic couplers on the front. There's the 46 inch deck. Here's a, uh, a front core aerator. And on the back, in the back there, he's got a single bottom plow, which is really neat. He's got a, a, a tiller there, which I've never seen him use. But uh, here he's got a sprayer, a broadcast sprayer, if you will, with the Honda engine, single cylinder. And uh, he's got another cedar back there, broadcast cedar. And here's a set of cultivators for the three-point hitch. Uh, I, uh, I've used the cultivators in the garden that we've had over at his house. It's pretty cool. Um, so that's basically the whole tractor. It's uh, like I've said before. It's um, it's very beat up, as you can see, but it's quite a workhorse. It just runs and runs and runs. So uh, now I'm going to uh, go ahead and start it up for you. <laughs> Not sure if it'll start, but uh, let's choke it. You turn the key on, you got uh, your gauges there, which are kind of cool. It runs very smooth. Those engines are real nice. Yes, so there it is. That's the John Deere 318. Uh, definitely one of the best tractors I've operated. And uh, now you guys are probably wondering why it's so worn down. I mean, I see a lot of these used in such good condition, but I will show you what my uncle mows with this and actually what he does. Um, so let's, let's see. Here's the back of his property, uh, the racetrack, and he's just got these extra fields here. He mows the nursery with it, which is um, the, the uh, power steering comes in very handy when trying to get around the trees, and uh, that's why the fenders are so nicked up. And uh, his lawn, obviously, that's the main purpose of this tractor, because uh, his lawn goes around the nursery and goes all the way up to his house there. And uh, that's, that's what the 318 mows every week. This is 20 acres, and he mows about 10 of it with the 318. So it's a very reliable tractor if it can stand all that, all that work, which, of course, it does, no problem.